Hello and welcome to this edition of Intelligent Video Today from Intelligent Research. I'm your host, Steve Vonerhaar. Join us on the show today, Marty Roberts from Bright Cove. Welcome, Marty. Good to be with you. It's uh, great to have you. Everyone knows about Bright Cove as an online video platform, but for the uninitiated there out there, tell us a little about, bit about uh, the broad set of uh, capabilities and uh, video production ca uh, capabilities that we see from the Bright Cove platform. Yeah, um, and thanks for that. Like, you know, Brightcove, as you've mentioned, has been around for a long time. The company was originally founded in 2004, introduced its first product in 2006, uh, actually went public in 2012. So, you know, one of the, uh, one veterans, of the pioneers, the pioneers of, those veterans of the industry as it goes. Um, and, you know, over that time, of course, we built out the functionality that really goes end to end. So, a video that comes into our system gets all the workflow that happens for all the different flavors for all the different devices. So we manage that entire process. That could be both a VOD video or a live video. Um, we manage all the metadata around that content to enable uh, discovery of that content uh, over time. Uh, we manage all the monetization rules around that content. Is it advertising? Is it subscription? Is it both? Uh, all, all that. Uh, and then ultimately, um, uh, we manage all of the play out of that. So we have players and apps uh, as it goes. So that's a simplified description of kind of the end-to-end -end system as it goes. Uh, along the way, there's tons of bells and, and uh, whistles that kind of make that uh, the overall experience more productive, more scalable, all the security requirements for every, you know, every flavor, you know, all that kind of stuff is all built in. So um, it's, uh, you know, and it, it's also really built for scale. We have actually about 700 different media customers. We have over 2000 enterprise customers that are using the system in 80 different countries around the world. Um, on any given day, we stream about just over a thousand seventy two years of content is streamed every day through our system so uh it's uh you know it's it's history uh so, you know all, all that video yes so yeah, yeah. So, so clearly a mammoth platform with a, a wide range of features and capabilities but let's focus our conversation uh, today on uh monetization and distribution of content as you said you've done that quite a bit with the media companies uh, uh over the course of bright cove's history but but now now we're starting to look at opportunities in the, the do-it-yourself content creation market. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, what technology trends do you see playing a role in fostering that kind of uh, a democratization of the um, uh, distribution of streaming content? Yeah, I, I think that, you know, what we've seen is with the maturation of platforms like Brent Coves, um, you know, it's our job to make it easier to use every single day, basically. Uh, and so our big customers, you know, really drive that roadmap for us. But what we're finding is that as we simplify the overall video workflow, as we simplify app creation for our customers, um, even as we simplify what was kind of the biggest building, um, you know, uh, hurdle for smaller companies to get over understanding all the data and what actions to take around that data we now have kind of out of the box products for them and that really allows uh smaller creators to just jump into a particular space to uh, it allows uh, media companies that you've you know never quite heard of uh, to jump into the space and launch brand new services. And it could be an individual creator that's taken an audience that they might have on another platform like a YouTube or a TikTok and starting to develop a direct relationship with them. Or it could be a smaller media company that's just launching out of the uh, blocks and kind of building out these niche brands with kind of a passionate fan uh, offering. So uh, yeah, that whole early range is really based on uh, having these products that just kind of work out of the box. Um, yeah. And you have that capability to uh, enable those content creators with that whole suite of tools. But really, when it comes right down to it, it's all about monetization, isn't it? Uh, the, the person yeah. who can put the stuff, the dollars in the pockets of the content creators are, are going to win. And that's uh, been a large advantage for, for the likes of YouTube uh, in, in recent history. Uh, uh, why shouldn't a content creator necessarily just hitch their wagon to the YouTube star and and just let uh, let the tech uh, follow the tech where it leads them? Yeah, you know, I mean, there's definitely advantages to building an audience in all of those uh, um, in all of those environments. the The downside is a couplefold. Number one is 
you don't own your audience. You don't have any direct relationship with that audience. And so uh, you are then beholden to that platform and the policies that they have. So if uh, they, you know, if you were uh, on a social network and it suddenly changes ownership and suddenly the rules are all different. I, I don't know any examples I, of that yeah, in it, recent it, history. It could never happen. Uh, it could never happen. Marty. It could never happen. Of course, it could never happen. But basically, you are dependent on that particular platform maintaining um, their consistent policies moving forward, the types of content they work with, the rev shares that they have, the uh, um, type of content that they're willing to advertise against in all those cases. It changes over time for lots of good reasons for them, but maybe not the best reasons for you. So it's great to build an audience there. Um, but there's always a question about at what point should you take that next step and actually start developing your own relationship with that audience? Yeah, and that's uh, uh, you you tie yourself to a, a star, and that's a, a great uh, great thing for the short term, but uh, might not necessarily be the best long term strategy. So, how can uh, content creators go about building that? Uh, independence uh, when they're uh, monetizing uh, content. Uh, uh, what can they do if they decide to go outside the YouTube ecosystem? Yeah, it, it's a really good question. And, um, we like to call it the producer economy, right? It is all of these individual content creators that are amazing in their content creation. And now, you know, in that kind of old Hollywood of like, hey, we've got our actors and directors, but we actually had the producers that run the business um, uh, that sit on top of it. Um, and so the, um, this idea of a producer economy is this idea about how do we start to build a direct relationship with audience members over time? And how do we monetize that in the most effective way? Now, what we find is that every type of content tends to have a very natural monetization mechanism that's with uh, that sits with it. So for some content, you can absolutely draw uh, millions of viewers per month. And in that particular case, what you uh, ideally would want to do is reduce your barriers to entry. Um, uh, so no logins, no registration, and then you run advertising against it. And it's our job to then help you uh, maximize the revenue per minute watched across those audience members for advertising. Um, for other content creators, um, it's actually what often happens is they have a lot of free content on a YouTube or on a TikTok or some other video platform. Um, in their, maybe it's a Twitch, things like that. Uh, you know, lots of good options that are out there. But in their particular case, they want to take their most passionate fans and develop a direct relationship with them through a, a small subscription. Could be two bucks a month. Could be four bucks a month. Doesn't really matter. The point is, is that you're kind of uh, taking the cream of your audience and you're giving them extra access. Maybe it's early access an old windowing strategy from Hollywood comes back around, things like that. There's so nothing, are, there is nothing new in the world, is there, Marty? I think seven stories told over and over. So, uh, yes. And so that that is the, um, that's the idea here is how do you set yourself up to actually develop that relationship with those audience members so you can talk to them directly, so you can maximize your uh, monetization, essentially becoming an entrepreneur yourself uh, based on your own content. Yeah, so all that sounds good uh, when you're talking in academic or theoretical uh, 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 high-minded uh, themes, but uh, are there an actual use case, uh, case use uh, use case studies from uh, uh, the world of Bright Cove customers? Absolutely, and, you know, and across the board, you know, we have customers that um, this was a you know it was a COVID dependent. Tendency. We have a customer called the Sculpt Society. Mm -hmm. You know, they started out, it was, it was uh, just a fantastic woman that had this great kind of following as a personal trainer. Uh, and then, she, you know, because everything, the gym shut down, she launched, turned out to be her and her husband launched a subscription video service and things like that. And we helped them understand that audience and how to market to them. And, you know, these are building great fan communities, um, uh, going away from this individual kind of content creation uh, mechanism and really building out a direct relationship with that audience. It, to your point, it sounds academically right. I don't want to underestimate. You need a lot of dedication to really, you know, what's the right acquisition tactics that we should be using uh, to get audience members into our video service? Uh, how do we communicate with them? Is it in-app notifications? Is it emails? What's our communication strategy once they're on board so they know about the new content that's coming up? How do we keep them engaged so they don't churn out? 
These are all, you know, it takes a dedication to really um, kind of master those techniques. It doesn't take a lot of people, though. Uh, we have services that, uh, uh, you know, have tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of subscribers paying them, you know, great ARPUs uh, that are run by one or two people. So, you know, it doesn't take a lot. You just have to be really smart about how you automate your um, processes around your video, around your content. Um, yeah. So uh, um, uh, it's definitely, it is more doable today than it's ever been in the history of streaming. Yeah, now uh, there's going to be some people who come to you with, when you're talking about the producer economy, they're going to say, Marty, if it's if it's not broke, why why try to go out and fix it? Um, uh, why sh are you advocating that people just ditch their YouTube channels and uh, go whole hog over the Bright Cove ecosystem? Never, no. You know, we find it's it's always an and. It doesn't have to be an or. Um, and so, uh, of course, you want to. You know, what YouTube. YouTube also brings not just with technology is actually um, uh, a wonderful um, audience that uh, exists on that platform. And so um, we want to continue to make sure you serve that fan base that's in that environment. Um, and then, you know, but again, you can employ really smart strategies. Again, maybe it's a windowing strategy. Only your uh, owned and operated sites and, and service, your video service gets access to the content first. And then seven days later, YouTube gets the rest of it, you know? And so there's ways actually that you can, um, maybe there's exclusive content, extra content that you only put on your own service. Um, but that's not to say you should ever dismiss the fans that you've developed, that audience you've developed in a YouTube environment or TikTok or Twitch or whatever. It's a, it's always an and, but there's absolutely a real opportunity to build that um, uh, extra uh, part of the business, basically. It's really uh, circling back. It's kind of like buying an insurance policy, putting yourself more in control of your uh, content future, content development future. If you have multiple sources, multiple ways to uh, multiple platforms that are contributing to your revenue stream. That's exactly right. You know, um, understanding and being able to communicate with your audience is paramount to your control of your overall destiny. And so um, so we really want to help all these content creators kind of evolve their um, into being those producers, into being those business owners. Now, talk to, uh, to those content creators who might be a little bit worried about the specter of artificial intelligence out there. Uh, you know, some of these tools are getting pretty scary good in terms of uh, automatically generating video content, uh, leveraging AI tools. Uh, uh, what types of solutions are, are companies like Bright Cove uh, uh, looking at to help uh, protect content creators over the long haul uh, in this AI revolution? Yeah, you know, it's a really interesting challenge and kind of a um, one that's been like, like every good technology step function, it's been bubbling along and then suddenly pops, uh, you know, it's, um, and oh, it's, so popping. it's popping, it is absolutely popping. And so, you know, in these particular uh, cases, what we're really looking at here is how do we certify the authenticity of this content as being my content? You know, this is really uh, um, what we're looking at. Um, and so there's different ways that we can do that. We can set watermarks on the content itself. Of course, we can provide DRM protection around that content. We can provide uh, restricted access to that, you know, registration. So you have to sign in to be able to access that content. We can do concurrent stream caps, all kinds of functionality around security around that content that ultimately says, this is mine. Uh, and, and I certify that this was produced by me. Um, based. And so, um, you know, now, just like DRM uh, and, and privacy was an issue that we had to really combat through in the 2000s around streaming and, and make sure that all content was really well protected, we have a new arms race that we're essentially getting into between professional content uh, producers and these AI engines and the people that might want to generate, you know, fakes, deep fakes, basically. And so, you know, it's going to be an evolving battle, but obviously... It's kind of the advantage of working for a company like Bright Cove that has, you know, hundreds of engineers and, and uh, a worldwide staff is that we can really um, we have the resources to, you know, to um, to take on this type of, of challenge that's uh, now facing the industry. Uh, I love the concept of a video technologies arms race and Bright Cove is going to be right there standing shoulder to shoulder with content creators uh, uh, in that battle. Yeah, we have to be.
Yeah. Uh, Marty Roberts from Brightco. Thanks for taking uh, the time to visit us at Intelli uh, Intelligent Video today. Thanks for having me, Steve. And our thanks goes out to our viewers for tuning in today. Be sure to look for more episodes of Intelligent Video today down the line where we will be talking with more thought leaders from the intelligent video space like Marty Roberts. Uh, for Intelligent Research, I'm Steve Onderhaar. Thanks for your time. <laughs>